Welcome back to Pyre. Now that was, we're getting right down to the wire with these rights. I haven't lost one yet, but oh my god, it's getting close. So this is Udmil's reaction to us just winning. Ah, how can this be? How can this be? And they fought under the sign of Eastlack and they still mop the floor with you. Eastlack, answer us. Eastlack, Eastlack. Which Udmil continues with their screaming, having been defeated in the right. You observe Bertrude there, fixed in a meditative pose. <sighs> Udmil, relent. Relent. Thy god has not abandoned thee, because thy god is dead. Thy god is dead. Pray to him all thou likest, yet it shall do thee no good. As Bertrand proceeds into the shadows, Udmil slumps down, staring at nothing before her. Impossible. This cannot be. Answer us. Answer us. Suffered minus five hope permanently. May scribes have mercy. The eight scribes us with their ways. Nice. No matter what anyone says, I refuse to think there's some sort of limit to one's understanding of all this. Good lad. Alright, what can we get you doing? His aura travels in a wider, longer the line. He jumps into Ebel adversaries, he banishes them. Wearing the orb, his allies move with and pass the orb more quickly. Um, I think we're going to get this one, because you were casting quite a lot in that one. Because you're not quite as fast as some other teams, but you... Cast a long aura and you cast it quick. You're almost at max. A flash of inspiration for next time. <laughs> yeah. Volfred's seen a lot of rights. Uh. Until the stars align. Yep. He sounds super happy about all this. If you hit me with friends. <laughs> that line cracked me up. Back at the Black Wagon, you're taking some time to recover after thwarting the withdrawn in spite of almost having lost when Volfred approaches. The Nightwings are in capable hands these days, my girl. Thank you for your continued efforts, given all the challenges we face. The rice may be ending, but we still have time to achieve our plan, especially if you continue to prevail like that. 54? Not bad. Come, let's see whom we shall square against when next the stars align. The stars yet shine for you, revealing various paths forward. Okay, let's see what the order is now then. Tri Triasta, Lou, the Vernal, and Mileth the Bog. I'd rather not go to Flagging Hands again. Okay, so the fucking Pie Hearts are set to win this. Like to be our next. <laughs> Which I'm perfectly happy with. I'm so happy with that, you have no idea. Um, so literally anything would be good. We're not going to change the pie hearts, of course. Uh, the essence. Or should we have another crack at the chastity? Because they weren't too hard, whereas the essence... I know the essence would be good because we can use Pamitha again. So either way, it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, let's try the essence. Um, we've got Rookie, he's a jumping boy. We do quite good against him. My harp's better than your harp, so... <laughs> The stars reveal to you a path towards the Glade of Lu, where the rites shall soon commence. Come morning, your travels shall continue. For now, everyone needs rest. It's jolly good. We do need a bit of rest, don't we? Greater Titans and East Lake Astralborn. Oh, Hedwin. You can tell something is troubling Hedwin from the moment you approach. You are not the only one. Oh, you're not the only one either. Looks like a case of broken heart to me there, reader darling. Trust me on that one. Hedwin overhears. It's nothing. I think all the travel's catching up with me is all. You don't make much of a liar, Hedwin, darling. Now then, let's have her name. Or his. That obvious, is it? That obvious. Now go on. Hedwin hesitates a while, then... Her name was Ficani. Some of whom Hedwin cares deeply. They were separated in the Commonwealth. Oh, she's pretty. Ficani? Why, that's a harp's name. Yes, she's from the mountains, same as you. You don't mean Ficani Shang, do you? We feared we'd lost her in the gorge. What? You know her? Come on, Hedwin. How many of us harps do you think there are? Your commonwealth has been rather successful scouring my people from our world. But yes, Fakani Shang and I have spent some time together in the past. Flown a few sorties now and then. We are in different units, though. She was reconnaissance, if I recall. 
She said as much to me. But what happened to her? When you were sentenced, it was about the... Oh, that's headwind, sorry. She said as much to me. But what happened to her? When you were sentenced, it was about a year after me, wasn't it? So, maybe? She was alive and well when last I saw her. Got back from the gorge with a few scrapes and some good information. Granted, that was several years ago. Who knows what could have happened since. Though I must say, she never mentioned you. I'm impressed she managed to keep secret your relationship. She could have gotten herself into some real trouble. You keep her a secret too, please. Oh, don't worry about me. Down here, I'm in no position to betray any more of my people. And besides, I liked Vigani. And you're not bad either. Why, this is rather sweet. Edwin just stares at her. I'm sorry, Edwin. I wasn't trying to make light. I wish I could tell you more about her, though. I think you must know her better than I do. Yeah, look, I'm sorry too. I didn't mean to get on your case about it. It's just... I don't like to talk about it much. It's a lot to have to explain. I understand completely. So then, now that the awkward introductions are out of the way, could you tell me any more about what she was like? Well, let's see. They continued talking for some time about Fikani and about how such a relationship would have been seen in both the Highwing Remnants and the Commonwealth. For Hedwin, just knowing that Fikani still lives, or at least that she was still alive after his exile, lifts his spirits. Anyhow, if you get out of here, or I get out of here, we'll have to seek her out. If I go first, I'll let her know you're in one piece and thinking of her still. Thanks, Pamitha. That means a lot. Don't mention it. As the conversation winds down, they bid you and each other a good evening and go their separate ways. Oh, I was expecting a bonus for Hedwin there, seeing as lifted the spirits, but apparently not. Okay. Uh, the Greater Titans, in the word of Unger King Ores, the Sea Sojourner. The stars shine beneath the strange beneath the sea. The one, this one dared rise from the water so that you could see them plain, the burning essences of those who came before. Our lives are but a quest to join the stars. This one longed to be the brightest. But then the downside this one met those who own stars shall doubtless burn at least hot. Together we achieve great deeds. You may have seen some evidence on it, the remains of the greater titans which once darkened this dark land, but in our kinship was the strength to conquer them. It is this one's humble charge to chronicle those deeds, and may the titan stars never stain the sky during your time. There we go, East Lack Astralborn. The foul name of the Star Titan is written here but once. Do not invoke it, lest you aid its reawakening. It sub sups upon despair and fear and doubt, and lands such as our own. It was our mighty Mistress Millith which tracked the astral-born monstrosity within its loathsome pit, where it lay nursing wounds sustained from travelling across the stars in search of simple prey. The wicked astral-born could drive a lesser creature to the brink of sanity with a mere passing glance. But not Millith. She cast upon the fiend a hundred words of binding, each one more binding than the last. With the creature's incandescent skin, we bound this book, and bound ourselves unto the stars. Great. So we've got skin of a titan. Oh, how's the plan going? 54. We've got one more right into liberation. God knows how many liberation rights. But we've conducted three and exiled three. We're on 17-0, so... Even if we lose one, I think we'll be okay. Downbury. A bit of fungus. Sell. Um, and let's carry on. This weather is horrible. <laughs> Isn't this supposed to be a desert? Excuse me, lads. So we're up to where we met the Volfrid for the first time, I believe. The hidden glade of Louis is nigh impossible to find on foot, though there it lies below us, protected even now by the enchantment of Louis' glory and a hundred mines. I understand the river named for him is rather famous in your commonwealth. The mouth of that river glory and opens wide not very far from here. The largest river on the other side, which cascades down eternally into the downside. Be gone to distant lands beneath our own, more suited to your kind. <laughs> it was there that ooh, the limbless Arizek, the root titan, Vanquished by the scribe Luce Glorian. Arizak yet lives, a husk, a single foul seed, still rotting where once something mighty stood. As defeated, turning the region lush and livable, at least for certain denizens, although of course not everyone believes this. Your adversaries the essence must be working to find their way even now. Good fortune in your right against them, reader. Right, where have we got? Needle field? Pamatha says he can sway the coming right against the essence in your favour here. Or Birchus says maybe the faster route leaving you with your time for your vocations. First, let's see what's going on to say here. As the wagon soars across the sky above Wakingwood, you notice Volford appears lost in thought. You cannot sense straight away what he is thinking. 
past. Do not mind me, reader. It's simply that being here in this vicinity it brings back a lot of memories and gives me much to ponder. I hid within those woods for many, many years making preparations for our plan. I cast aside my raiments and became untraceable. There I waited for the plan to germinate, so it means a lot now to be here, above that place at last. Quite the view, wouldn't you say, my girl? Let's uh, see what Pamitha can do against her sister. Uh, your wagon touches down in Black Basin, where first you met Volfrid and Pamitha as well. You briefly wonder what might have happened had your paths not crossed as you consider what to do with the remains of the afternoon. There's still fear in the essence. I'm game for that. Bit of fear. You do your best to keep up with Pamitha as she delves into the untamed flora of Needlefield. She indicates that some of her winged sisters may be nearby to lend their aid. This is as far as you can follow, Rita, darling. Please excuse me for a little while. She sweeps off, leaving you on your own. Some time passes, during which you can almost feel the downside encroaching all around you. And then... Well, that was certainly interesting. I suggest we get out of here. But appear the essence soon will have a little accident that should dampen their spirits. I would then show the essence some minus three hope. Nice. Oh, she looks upset. You find Pamitha by herself again, though her expression is growing darker than her custom. Leave me be, would you, Rita, darling? I'm trying to get some good and proper moping done here, and you're distracting me. Leave me be, Rita, just leave me be. Just leave me be. I don't want to know what's lurking in my heart or mine. What you'll find there isn't pretty. Yet something about her thought process is different to you now. You know that with her conditioning, she can resist your scrutiny, but now her thoughts are laid bare to you. Pamitha knows how to volunteer her thoughts more readily if she has something to share. Yeah, I don't want to pry. Pamitha's thoughts are her own business. The fleeting connection between you is severed. Thoughts are loads and things, reader. It's difficult to know how best to hide them. Mine are plain enough for you to see by now. She exhales and looks askance. You know by now why I'm in this mess with all of you. You could say I lack Tamitha's sense of commitment, her zeal. She lives only to see your nation overthrown. Or something worse, if she could have her way. Centuries of conflict can be quite emboldening that way, especially when one's sister's leading cause of death is commonwealth forged steel. Will do with the utmost mercy, of course. Well, I had little patience for the senselessness of it myself. It became a bit of a pariah, I suppose. I knew Tamitha was going to get herself and others killed some day, so when she was to fly out on this one big mission of hers, I had other arrangements made. But after she was caught, your people did not exactly uphold their end of the bargain. I knew there were such risks, of course, and yet, a chance is still a chance. Tamitha was clipped and cast down. A mercy, they called it. I did not see it that way, and in my growing protests of her treatment, I was soon enough to follow. She falls silent for a while. I haven't yet decided if I entirely regret my actions, but I do seek Tamitha's forgiveness and wish that she could see my thoughts for what they are, as it seems you can. Then she might realize our nation's people have much more in common than she knows. Sometimes I wonder which one of them's the stupider. She brushes past you and out the wagon for now. Well, we didn't lose anything, so... Then we've got the Black Basin. The continent we call Black Basin shall one day tear itself apart. Arriving upon blackened molten crags, tolerable only by the harp Trieste, we pressed onward towards the suffocating wood. This land felt to us somehow primordial. Deep in its roots and noxious crevasses lay innumerable clues to its ancient history, but we had little time to excavate, for our supplies by then were thin. Further, we were lost. Our best attempts at circumnavigation all had failed. It was Luce Glorion who reached out at last unto the stars, and they revealed the way. Then we at last could see the sacred Mount Annadale there in the distance. Lovely. Let's continue out of Black Basin, shall we? And continue onwards to the Glade of Lou. Oh. Yay, it's Rookie. A messenger in with news and rumours on the other side comes huffing towards your wagon, here in the razor brambles of Black Basin. Black glass, searing vapour and strangling forests. Lovely. You let it in and they offer it some light refreshment, as Rookie would have done. The imp's message turns out to be about him. You learn Rookie's past transgressions have all been forgiven since his return to the Commonwealth. He was even offered a well-appointed home and place of business. It must have represented just the kind of lavish lifestyle that Rookie always claimed to have had for himself and his extended family. Eventually, and somewhat reluctantly, however, he refused the gifts. Instead, he tracked down Volfrey's agent and gave them ample information, thus emboldening their ranks. The last bit of the message sounds like it was just transcribed word for word from something Rookie said. It simply reads, The best of you, you better get back here soon, or else. You thank the messenger in for the report. 
soon it has all your companions talking. The days aren't quite so bright without him, though it sounds like he's doing well up there. We understand this rookie holds no small degree of influence, at least among his kind. It seems that Greentail has himself a conscience after all. I had every faith that our friend Rookie would stand tall and rise to the occasion. Hard to believe he would have turned down living in that kind of luxury. Then maybe he got used to it out here. Ah, the noble Rookie! He sets a shining example unto us all! The news of Rookie's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with newfound resolve. The messenger Emma accepts some scraps to eat from you and rushes off. Hey, plus one hope. Good luck, Rookie. Blade of Lou. Uh, hey guys, let me tell you something real quick. Well, I happen to have heard that Mr. Greentail has moved on or something like that, right? Well, I just wanted you to know he's one of my favourite customers, and because of that, I'm giving you the same great deals, okay? Sure, Ron. Well, I guess maybe I should pack it up for the day. I just wanted to see if you had anything interesting to say. You don't. Tamitha finds you as everyone is preparing for the coming right against the Essence. Despite this meaning yet another confrontation with her blood sister, she seems very calm. I know what you're thinking, Rita Darling, so let me assuage any misgivings you might have. It'll be strictly business between me and Tamitha this time. <sighs> believe me, believe me. I know there's nothing I can do for her. I am nothing to her. But I can still be of use to all of you. I got Tamitha in here as I was tired of kind, our kind throwing ourselves against Commonwealth lances. Maybe this plan of ours might finally ensure an end to all of that. She flies off to join the others just as night begins to fall and usher in the stars. None of these this time, I think. Oh shit, I didn't realize you had to unselect it. Well. <laughs> well. Well, well, well. The stars align, you exiles of the night wings. The eight scribes summon you to the Glade of Liu. Your adversaries and the coming right shall be the essence. Extinguish now their pyre, and glory shall be yours. Now prepare yourselves. I'm prepared, and yep. You ain't so chummy anymore. I can see that much. <laughs> Once more, there's this commonwealth filth dark in an already inauspicious night. Tamitha remains steady alongside your fellow exiles and shows no response to being in the presence of her blood sister once again. <laughs> Tamitha looks right at her the entire time she speaks, but never once acknowledges her directly. <laughs> but there is no need for any more talk between our kind. We are forever at cross purposes. No further proof is needed than the circumstances under which we meet. Tamitha does not acknowledge her. He says that she is only focused on the right, set to commence any moment now. Yeah, I figured they might go all harpy. We'll they went all witch last time. Uh, well, we need headwind in there, just to make sure he can go through. He can also jump. Uh, and our own special harpy. And I think I'm going to go Sir Gilman, because Jidari won't be much use against them because they're not that susceptible to aura casts. It's better um, for jumpers to stun them and grab and run, because they fly a lot, basically. That's my... yeah. Sir Very well. For the glory of the night wings. Come forth, you commonwealth scum. Sisters, show them no quarter. I'll take that, thanks. Oh, or not. Let me come back fast. Oh. Ah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> ah. Cast. The all take it. Got it. <laughs> Damn, can someone just score already? This is mad. Oh. Ah. Yes, there we go. Oof. This is going to be a long ass right. <laughs> I 
Skillwin can slither a bit faster than Hedwin can run, I think. Ugh. There we go. Oof. Probably. Ah. Oh, I not wasn't sure what happened there. So Gilmore just kind of had it. <laughs> <laughs> that might be it. You just kind of gather them all around and then pass it off. Of course I'm worthy, bitch. Ah. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Wriggle, lad. Ah. Oh, wow. Didn't see you coming there. Wow, okay. Did not expect that to work. <laughs> you blasted Nightwings, so desperate to protect the people who discarded you like the trash that you are. Come then, let us show you. Yep, oh, well. Ooh. Nope. Didn't quite work. But they're throwing it in, which. or not. <laughs> yep. Hey, bloody campers. Yep, and they do max damage that way. Oh well. <laughs> oh fuck. Come on, stamina. I need stamina. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> fuck was that? Plunged into their fire, eh? Ah. Positively brutish. Ah, I forgot you can't fly over these things. Come on, stab it! Ah! Yep. Next one in gets it. Ah. Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> no! Oh, no, my first loss. Ever so close. Ah, if only your fortune shall be better next time. No, I had to get my loss in there somewhere. You and the Nightwings may have experienced your first defeat, but this is not the end. Rather, this is an opportunity for you and your fellow exiles to press onward. Hebrin, for example, learned a valuable lesson. A rush of enlightenment. Okay. So too is Pamitha, not in spite of this setback with the essence, but because of it. And Sir Gilman is no exception. He has gained more insight here as well. Your fellow exiles all shall gain enlightenment and learn and grow from what transpired. And your story shall continue. Choice of whether to accept your outcomes now and all throughout your quest is to be yours alone. Well, it had to happen at some point, didn't it? Dregs of the Commonwealth, your pyre is ash and your time is past. We could have had that. Tusk, I'll have to be more careful. Yeah, we definitely could have had that. Always is 
there greater knowledge to be gained? Yeah, we'll just have to take off the fucking Titan Stars, because that made them so much faster. <laughs> just have to learn to... Yeah, you know what I mean. Making excuses for my loss, basically. Until the next right. Well, as it loads through, we shall end it here on our first loss. Bit of a shame, but we're up against the bloody pie heart, so I'm not too worried about next time. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like my content, please do uh, check out my other videos, and if you do, I shall see you there. Goodbye.